Cup beat the Pittsburgh Pirates 6 to 3. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll have a complete sports roundup for you in just a moment. Yeah, another bourbon. Come on right up. Here's the news bulletin from the nation's capital. Washington, officially this morning, denies rumors of enemy planes over northern Alaska. Meanwhile, there's been no lessening of international tension, and informed sources refuse to discount the possibility of all-out war. Shut that thing off. I got enough war talk at home. Yeah, you can say that again. Meanwhile, in Italy, the communists caused another riot Quiet, today Jake. as communists marched on Rome. That'll hold you. <laughs> I wish I could keep him that quiet when he comes in here. Customer of yours? Yeah. The TV station's right down the street. And what do you think the lug drinks? A shave flip. Oh, you must know him, huh? No. And you've seen him in here? No. Well, then how did you know? He looks like the sort of person who drink a shave flip. Say, he does it that. <laughs> Hi, right, Tim. How about a beer? Fine, sure. Is you working today? Yeah, but I thought I'd work in a nice, cool bar. Mind if I start with you, sir? My name's Potter, Vince Potter. I'm a commentator for station TVNY. Would you mind answering a question for tomorrow's program? You, um, gonna use it on television? That's the idea. Well, uh, gosh, I'll be glad to. Good. First, I'll get your name and address, huh? Ed Mulvery, Boulder County, Arizona. Arizona occupation. I'm a cattle raiser. Cattle raiser. Now, here's today's question. Are you for or against the universal draft? Now, by that, I mean draft everything. Soldiers for the army, factories for war work, labor for factories, the whole business. Well, there's too much government and business already. You take cattle now. One bureau shoves the cost of feed up, and another keeps the price of beef down. That's why I cut my herd down to 3,000 head this year. Oh. I'd have raised 5,000 if they hadn't put price controls on. Another bourbon. And do they soak you with those income taxes? Oh, brother. You pay a high income tax? Plenty. You must make a great deal of money. I do all right. Well, down with taxes. What would you like, honey? A scotch over ice. You know, I don't know why you New Yorkers drink scotch. Stuff tastes like medicine to me. What do you drink in San Francisco? A daiquiri. That sounds like a sissy drink to me. I just like the cracked ice. Scotch and a cracked ice. I beg your pardon. I'm Vince Potter. Yeah? A television station TVNY. Oh, yes. I'd like to ask you both a question. But first, may I have your name, sir? Sylvester, George Sylvester. Your occupation? I'm a tractor manufacturer. Tractor maker. Your name? Miss? Miss Sanford. Carla Sanford. Telephone number? Rhineland 1717. Now look here. It's all right, George. I listen to Mr. Potter every Friday. His program is very popular in New York. So is he, evidently. Thank you. Now here's tonight's question, Mr. Sylvester. Are you for or against the universal draft? Army, labor, factory, everything. Draft factories? That's communism. Communism? That's a good quote. They tried that on me last week, when I told them where to get off. Last week? Where was that? My plant. They sent an army major in to see me. It would take me six months to get in production on these tank parts. In the meantime, what would happen to my tractor sales? The army needs tanks, Mr. Sylvester. Oh, sure. I'd like to hear you tell it to some of my dealers. If your dealers are good Americans, they'll know that tanks are more important than tractors. All they know is if they don't get tractors to sell, they're out of business. If an enemy nation conquered America, they'd be out of business for good. A fat chance. I'm sorry, Major. I'd like to accommodate you. But I've spent 10 years in building up my sales organization, and I'm not going to throw it away to do the government a favor. Mr. Sylvester, if people like you won't cooperate with your government willingly, the day may come when we'll be forced to take over your plants without asking your permission. Over my dead body. Now, let me tell you something, Major. The people of this country will never stand for a police state. And you can go back to Washington and tell them that for me. Yes, sir. Just because he was wearing a Major's uniform, he thought he could threaten me. But I sure told him off. 
You sure did. How about you, Miss Sanford? Do you believe in drafting women as well as men? Well, it all depends on what you want to draft this for. War work. Huh. I mean, labor in a munitions factory, for instance. I worked in a factory for a while during the last war. It ruined my hands, so I quit. Another drink, Tim, for everybody. Excuse me, gentlemen and young lady. Haraway's my name. Congressman Haraway. I'm just in New York for over the weekend. It's a pleasure to meet you. Well, it's nice to know you, too. Valuable work you're doing, young man. Seeking the voice of the people. I believe in it. That's the American way, the democratic way. Thank you, sir. That's uh, Arthur Haraway, isn't it, of Illinois? Arthur V., thank you, young man. You won't mention the locale of our interview, of course. Oh, of course not. Some of my constituents might not understand, you know. Uh, well, gentlemen, speaking in the voice of the people, I don't believe that anyone hears it with the same regularity as a congressman. Hundreds of letters coming in every week. People telling you what they're for, what they're against. Let me tell you what they're against. They're against communists. Yes, sir, they want communism destroyed wherever it rears its ugly head. Another thing the people don't like is war. No, sir, they don't like war at all. They don't want it. Fine. Are you against war, sir? Yes, I'm against it. Thank you. Another thing the people don't like are these high taxes. Sending all that money to Europe. Yes, sir, what my constituents want are lower taxes. Do you want lower taxes? Oh, none at all. Maybe I better get you in this symposium, too. May I have your name, sir? My name is Omen. Omen. Oh, yeah, like the band leader, O-H-M-A-N, isn't it? It will do. Uh-huh. Your occupation, Mr. Roman? I'm a forecaster. Weather forecaster. Now, what do you think of the draft? I think America wants new leadership. New leadership? What kind of leadership do you suggest? I suggest a wizard. A what? A wizard, like Merlin, who could kill his enemies by wishing them dead. That's the way we'd like to beat communism now, by wishing it dead. The manufacturer wants more war orders and lower taxes. Labor wants more consumer products in a 30-hour week. The college boy wants a stronger army and a deferment for himself. The businessman wants a bigger air force and a new Cadillac. The housewife wants security and an electric dishwasher. Everybody wants a strong America, and we all want the same man to pay for it. George. Let George do it. Ah, I disagree with you. I don't want to let George do it. <laughs> you must be the exception. No, I'm George. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a hot one. <laughs> Everyone wants George to do it. Except George. A very good joke. But wars are not won by making jokes. To win a war, a nation must concentrate. What's that guy yakking about? Something big going on. Speak up, jerk. No longer a rumor. The blue alert is on. No official word from Washington yet. Official word on what? But here's a news bulletin from United Press. A wireless operator from Seal Point, Alaska, reports over 500 planes were seen at 4.20 this afternoon. 500 planes? What kind of planes? They passed over Seal Point at an altitude of 10,000 feet, heading south. A dispatch from Washington. All military leaves are canceled. Members of the armed forces are to report to the nearest headquarters immediately. This sounds serious. I've got to get back to the station. Goodbye. Everybody. No, Alaska. More than 50 reports from all over the territory have now been received. 
Hundreds of unidentified aircraft are unquestionably moving south across Alaska. The latest report comes from the seaport of Peace Harbor. Attention all civilian air personnel. Report any observations on the identity of the approaching planes the Alaskan High Command immediately. I repeat. Here they come. Attention all civilian air personnel. Report any observations on the identity of the approaching planes the Alaskan High Command immediately. Can you see their markings? Not yet. They're coming at us. for Berlin, C for Canada, D for Dover. This is Knox Manning again, ladies and gentlemen. Unconfirmed reports state that our jet fighter planes have already engaged the enemy. From the United Press correspondent at Fairbanks, Alaska, it's now certain that the United States has been attacked without warning. Three civil airports in Alaska have been captured. A dozen more don't reply to urgent radio calls. There's a great deal of static in the Northwest, probably due to enemy jamming of the airwaves. The big mystery now is why have no cities been attacked? Why did the enemy throw away surprise, yet fail to drop a single atom bomb? captured to all civilian airfields in Alaska. Why? He must plan to use them for staging an attack on our factories, our cities, our shipyards, and our airfields. He's made several attacks on the Pacific Fleet, but was completely wiped out. G2 reports that the attacking forces are wearing American uniforms. Well, the question now, is he going to use his A-bomb? <laughs> Guys, scramble. This is it.
Ahead is airfield. Make ready to bomb. States of America. Washington, 10.30 p.m. The Joint Chiefs of Staff are now in session. So far, there have been official reports of only three A-bomb drops. Fletcher Field, Alexander May, and Costa Field. But unofficial information is to the effect that additional military objectives have been hit in the northwest and on the Pacific coast. The bombs used are reported to be nearly as strong as the American bomb dropped on Nagasaki. We now interrupt this news summary to take you to Washington, D.C. And so, another day of infamy has come within your lifetime and mine. Thousands of Americans have died victims of this treacherous attack. But it will not go unpunished. At this very minute, hundreds of our fastest bombers are speeding toward the enemy's homeland. We shall bomb their bases and their arms their factories and their railroads, their harbors and their oil fields. Our own atom bombs, more powerful than any the world has ever known, will wreak a terrible vengeance upon that nation whose long threat to the peace of the world today became a reality. bombers are carrying the war to the enemy's homeland, American fighter planes and the air arm of our fleet are valiantly defending the shores of our Pacific coast. Pilots, man your planes. Pilots, man your planes.
Kinnear. Kinnear. Join ranks in this bitter struggle with the forces of evil. Forces that will never rest until they have conquered the earth. Or are themselves conquered by the united strength of the free peoples of the world. Not enough. Turn it off. Where's the congressman? He left for Washington a couple hours ago. How about the fellow Oman? He's gone, too. Can you imagine those guys attacking the United States of America? Yeah, well, we'll shove it down their throats. This is it. The final game of the World Series, and we're the home team. Give me a beer, Tim, while I got some voice left, will you? Hi. Hi. Is it as bad as it sounds? Worse. What's the inside joke, Vince? Well, we've lost part of the state of Washington. About 50 military airfields in the west they were knocked out by atom bombs. It was like a modern kamikaze attack. No matter how many planes we shot down, they kept coming until one got through. A Navy air arm is operating from carriers off the coast of Oregon. They've taken a terrific toll of enemy planes. How about the cities in California? You mean San Francisco? Yeah. Hasn't been attacked yet. Thank God for that. But they hit a shipyard in the state of Washington. 20,000 dead. Oh, no. Oh, yes. But what are they up to? I mean, they wouldn't just drop a few bombs and let it go at that. Well, there was a rumor that they were dropping parachute troops near Puget Sound in American uniforms. Turn it on again, will you, Tim? We were trying to pick up a Tacoma station by microwave when I left. Do you think there'll be an actual invasion? I wish I knew. It's hard to believe, isn't it? I mean that this is actually happening, do I? Yeah, right here in the United States. Look at that. More than 2,000 enemy paratroopers dropping in a semicircle around the supply depot. Camp Lewis itself has been destroyed by an atom bomb. The National Guard is being mobilized, and civilians are meeting the invasion with calm courage. Here's another remote control view from our portable equipment. Here are regular American troops, Survivors of the bombing of Camp Lewis fighting with the invading paratroopers. This is probably the first picture ever taken of American soldiers shooting at an invader on American soil. Here's the target. Enemy paratroopers landing in a field near Puget Sound. We are taking these pictures from station TVWN's portable cameras equipped with telescopic lens. But even so, our mobile unit is within a quarter of a mile of the actual battle front. There goes one. But it will take more than a handful of riflemen to hold back the thousands of well-equipped troops who are dropping out of the skies above us here in the state of Washington. We're having trouble with our picture. I hope our microwave is getting through to the east. We want all Americans to know. Ladies and gentlemen, our connection with Tacoma has been broken. We will restore it if and when we can. Meanwhile, here is official confirmation of an earlier rumor. Washington, D.C., the Department of Defense announces that the Pacific shipyards have been destroyed by atom bombing. The same bomb smashed the business district of the city with casualties estimated between 20 and 50,000. I guess I'd better get back to San Francisco. You think it's safe? It's my town. You gonna try for an airplane ticket? That's what I had in mind. I think I'll go along with you. See if I can get one for Arizona. 
When I get back home, I'll tell Edna that I'm not likely to forget my dinner date with a cousin. Oh, dinner. I haven't fed you yet. You go find your plane ticket. I'm not hungry anyway. You see that she gets home safe. I'll make it my personal responsibility. Goodbye, then. Take care of yourself, George. Good luck. This is an emergency announcement. This is an emergency announcement. Every able-bodied citizen is requested to report to the nearest hospital to give blood for the Red Cross. Nightmare. This can't be happening. It was a cinch to happen. Last time I met a girl I really liked, they bombed Pearl Harbor. What happened to the girl? The war ended. Extra paper, America invaded. Read all about it. Extra paper, America invaded. Read all about it. Extra. Okay, thanks. Sorry, nothing for New Orleans. Anything for Minneapolis? Nothing for Minneapolis. Anything for Omaha? All flights for Omaha are sold out. Well, how about tomorrow? Tomorrow and all next week. Oh. I wonder if you can help me. My wife is very ill in Dallas. I can get you a reservation a week from next Tuesday, but you'll have to get a priority. Here's where you apply for it, sir. Could I get a ticket to Gardner Field, Montana? Gardner Field, Montana? That's right. Is this a business trip? No, I want to go home. My husband's there and my children, they're with him. I'm sorry, madam. All flights to Gardner Field have been discontinued. Discontinued? For how long? I'm afraid permanently. There hasn't been an attack early this morning. Was it, was it serious? An A-bomb. I don't think we'll do any good here. You know, there's a bellhop at my hotel. Knows all the angles. Maybe this isn't the time for angles. You're right. Any chance to get to Phoenix or Tucson? All sold out. How about San Francisco? Still a few spaces left, if you can get a priority. Apply for it here. Thanks. You know, I think I'll try for San Francisco with you. Maybe I can rent a car there and drive home. Fine, come along. I'd like a ticket to Seattle. I'm sorry. Gentlemen, are you sure you understood my instructions? We have lost air groups eight and nine, and there are still two fields remaining. Here and here. You know our plans. Regardless, the plus is concentrate two air groups on each one. Strike immediately with that bomb. Yes, Excellency. And uh, order the attack on San Francisco placed in the ready stage. Immediately, Excellency. New York Flight 289 to San Francisco Tower requests landing instructions. Tower to TWA, Flight 289. Land on Strip 3. This is KRO, San Francisco. While no A-bombs have fallen on California, an unofficial report from Northern California states that six ships flying the flags of six different nations were intercepted by the United States Navy and found to be carrying enemy personnel and equipment. Turn it off, will you, Mac? Anything you say. The Golden Gate, there is San Francisco. Open fire. What's that?
There is the target. Bombs away. Just up ahead, pull up the curve. This is awful. How do you like them guys? Bomb San Francisco yet? We never got bombed in the last war. You never got a brother. I was in Guada. Anybody got a cigarette? Have a cigar. Oh, thanks. Anybody got a light? That was too close. What's the chance of hiring your cab to drive me to Arizona? Hey, maybe get out of this town. Good luck. Sunset in the Pacific tonight. The all clear sounded in San Francisco, and the city by the Golden Gate had survived its first air attack. No A bombs were used, and although our armed forces took a terrific toll of enemy planes, serious damage to San Francisco cannot be denied. Meanwhile, this station will bring you the latest news developments as rapidly as they occur. Keep tuned to this channel for further developments. More coffee? Please. You know, it's funny, the world's coming to an end and you and I are sitting here having dinner. What's more, I was hungry. Know what you mean. Every once in a while, I forget what's happening in the world. I feel good. As if I'd just met a new beau. You have? One I like very much. He likes you even more. War or no war, people have to eat and drink and make love. News bulletin. A special meeting of the Joint Chiefs of Staff has been called in Washington. There have been no further reports of bombing from the West Coast, but an unconfirmed report maintains... Gentlemen, we've just smashed his largest A-bomb plant. Their next bomb? Four of them. Our B-36 has reached a target at 2,300. They blew a hole right through the middle of his plant. How many workers there? About 50,000. How many casualties would you estimate, General? Oh, I'd say at least half of them. Well, what will happen if he hits New York, Chicago, the way we hit him? It'll be tough. He's landed paratroops in California. The enemy is dropping parachute troops on the outskirts of the city. The army needs these tanks. We've got to get on them and repair them and do them fast. What about the tractors on the production line? I'll get them out of the road, dump them in the bay, anything. Let me emphasize that it's touch and go whether we can hold the city. A dozen tanks one way or another can make all the difference. We'll get them ready fast. Tell them in there on a 24-hour shift until those tanks are repaired. A 24-hour shift for what? To make more money for you? We don't have to work for this rat anymore. He's finished. All the capitalist rats are finished. Why don't you drop dead? Why does he want to make tanks? For profit. When he could make more money building tractors, he built tractors. Up, up with hands, up. Ah, you are here, just in time. I'm in charge here now. You were right. Your men will work at 24-hour shift until the tanks are repaired. But it is the people's army who will use them. Back on the job. You will get your orders. People like you always think you can beat anybody with your bare hands. If I had my life to live over. You would build tanks in this factory. Don't worry, you still have time. 
Only you will build them for us. That's what you think. Shut up! It would be a pleasure to kill you, too. But my orders are to keep you alive. Yeah. We need this factory, you see. And you know how to run it better than anybody else. So, there is only one thing to do. You are so dead right. And I'm just the man who can do it. <laughs> San Francisco fell at 12 o'clock today, and the invaders have established a firm foothold on American soil. Our military air bases within fighter plane range of Northern California have been knocked out by A-bombs, and it is rumored that the Army is being withdrawn to a defense line along the western borders of the Rocky Mountains. We now switch controls to Washington, D.C. for an official message. It is my unhappy duty to report to you that despite heroic effort by our armed forces. The enemy invaders have now secured San Francisco, Oakland, Astoria, Oregon, and Port Townsend. To the people of these cities, I bring this message. Do not despair. At 10 o'clock this morning, England and France declared war on our side. All the nations included in the Atlantic Pact have risen to defend the free world. Despite the unprovoked nature of the attack, the war has not been as one-sided as it may now seem to you. For every atom bomb dropped on our country, we have taken three to the enemy's heartland. And we have huge stocks of atomic weapons in reserve. Stocks large enough to eventually crush the enemy on his native soil and end forever his power to make war on any nation anywhere. So be of good courage. For we have met the first shock of aggression. And we have returned blow for blow. And even as I speak to you, our Pacific fleet is carrying the conflict to the enemy's homeland.
of the red stuff that you take out. Just a pint. The next time, I'll give you a fifth. All right, come around in about 12 weeks. Next. Hi, honey. Hey, what you doing here? Oh, I thought I'd spare you a few red corpuscles. Well, I can use them. Try to join the Air Force today. They didn't take you? 90,000 guys are trying to join now that it's too late to train men. What they need is equipment. What we need is blood. <laughs> sure you know what you're doing, huh? Please. That's cool. Don't be such a sissy. Oh, yeah, well. I... Sorry. That's better. Make a fifth. Okay. You know you're beautiful. We're ready. Does she know what she's doing with that thing? You can trust her. Yeah, I don't trust... I trust you. I don't trust... <laughs> you know, all we want to do is see what goes on in your veins. <laughs> All over America, long lines are forming in front of Red Cross blood bank centers. But authorities estimate that another five million pints are needed immediately. Even more if there are atom bomb attacks on the major centers of population. Ross, it's sure great to talk to my kids from Boulder City. Take the first turn to the right. Not far to go, huh? We'll be home in ten minutes. You'll be home, brother. Not me. They got a new flag over my home. That's too bad. You got any family in San Francisco? Yes, me and my cat. I'll give the two of you a job on my ranch. Oh, thanks. Look at those bombers. I'm sure glad we've got a lot of them. He said it. Uh, jet bombers were swept back wings. I got you. Uh, we've just intercepted a jet attack headed this way. They think maybe the dam's the target. How many planes? How far away? How many planes? I got you. Last seen at 6C for Charlie. Got it. Uh, about a dozen jets 120 miles west of here. They've uh, shot down most of them. What's that? That's them. Post 327 to command. Post 327 to command. Enemy jets approaching Boulder Dam. Enemy jets approaching Boulder Dam. Enemy planes coming in. Open fire. attacking Boulder Dam. I repeat, enemy planes are attacking Boulder Dam. Attention all citizens, Boulder Dam has been destroyed by enemy action. Evacuate all low ground immediately. Attention all citizens. Step on it. We got to get to my family.
Boulder Dam by an atomic missile today was only the culminating disaster in what will go down in history as Black Friday for the United States of America. At 10.27 this morning, off the coast of California, an American warship was the victim of another new atomic weapon when the carrier Crown Point suffered a direct hit by an atomic torpedo. First victim of a weapon that threatens the very existence of the United States fleet. The Crown Point waged a gallant fight for survival, but at 5.20 this afternoon, the fire reached her boiler room and Captain Headley gave the order to abandon ship. Meanwhile, flames swept the entire state of California tonight as the people of the Pacific Coast put their industrial establishments to the torch rather than allow them to fall into enemy hands. Here is a food warehouse in Oakland, burned to the ground by its owners to keep the thousands of tons of flour and sugar it held from being used to feed the enemy. This is Richmond, California, land of Western Petroleum. A million gallons of high-test aeroplane gasoline go up in flames to implement the scorched earth policy with which a resolute civilian population is meeting the first invasion of America since the War of 1812. Disaster follows disaster as railroad employees wreck their own trains to slow the enemy drive. A steel plant built at a cost of $50 million burns to the ground part of the terrible financial balance sheet of war. Billions of dollars of property lost to the American people forever because we did not provide a strong enough army to protect ourselves. I heard they got 10,000 transport planes flying in soldiers. They probably got half a million men in California by now. A fellow I know said his brother heard they had better than 60 ships in San Francisco Harbor. Says they landed a couple hundred heavy tanks and maybe a thousand atom bombs. The way I figure it's this. They must know they can't fight all the way across the United States. So this landing's just a diversion, see? I mean, they're just waiting for us to send our whole army out west. Then they'll overrun Europe. Bases. That's what they're after, airplane bases. As soon as they get them, they'll start to bomb Pittsburgh, Detroit, places like that. Man, we sure bombed the daylights out of them yesterday. Oh, another drink, Tim. Coming right up. Um, how about let me buy you one? No, thanks. Might as well have another. You know what the fellow says, drink and be merry, for tomorrow we die. <laughs> I'd rather not, thanks. Hi, honey. Hi. How's the blood bank? It's fine. Can we set a new record this week? You set a record with me a long time ago. Give me a beer, Tim, huh? Well, they turned me down again today. The Air Force? Mm, Navy this time. Air Force doesn't want me, Army doesn't want me, Navy doesn't want me. I want you. That's the best thing I've heard today. I mean it, too. Why wouldn't the Navy take you? Same old story. More men than they have weapons for. Soldier's no good without a gun, and a sailor's no good without a ship. Don't let it get you down, chum. Remember old Tim's motto, let Jack do it. Jack? Yeah, George's brother. <laughs> Oh, you kill me. Let's get out of here. Right now. Right now. I'm with you. Hey, Vince. You forgot your beer. You drink it. Why not? <laughs> Tim, you're a character. What are you going to do now that there's a war on? Same thing I did in the last couple of wars. Shake that one. <laughs> <laughs> Emergency announcement. Radar screens have picked up unidentified aircraft approaching New York. The red alert is on. I repeat. Emergency announcement. Unidentified planes approaching New York. The red alert is on. You suppose they're really going to bomb New York? They threatened to. It was on the news wire. We didn't want to release it and start a panic. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid at all. I know what you mean. I think we were afraid because we were drifting. We didn't know where we were going. Carla, there may not be much time left. But in the few days there are, I want to spend them with you. I want that too. I want it very much.
Hello. indicate that more than 30,000 dead were the victims of the A bombing of New York City when an enemy plane pierced our defenses and dropped its deadly cargo late last night. And only the heavy steel and concrete construction of the city skyscrapers held down the death toll as more than 50,000 injured filled New York hospitals alone. City and state civilian defense workers are on a 24-hour shift and aid is pouring into New York City from every direction. Any further report on the New York attack? Here are some air pictures of the damage. About a third of the city has been quarantined. Radiation. How did the radiation casualties compare with the direct fatalities? No report on that yet. What's his purpose? Why should he capture one small part of the Pacific coast and then stop? He may be stockpiling A-bombs to hit our industrial centers. In which case, this may have been a probing attack to test our defenses. Today we make the critical attack. 10,000 special paratroops. Every man speak English. Every man wear United States uniform. We attack city of Washington. Our big generals are there. All government officers. We kill these people today. Our soldiers. What is the word for Boschatlik? Infilter? Ah, oh, yeah. Infilter. Our soldiers infilter and assassinate. No one left to give order. No command for the army. No leader for the government. Could the bombing of New York be a diversion to keep all our air strength away from the West? Oh, it could be. Perhaps that's what he wants us to think. Perhaps he'd like us to send everything West and leave the East Coast unprotected. I don't believe we've seen his main attack yet. Put the red alert on everywhere. <laughs> Craft, Section Charlie, Zone 4. Looks like a transport. Yes, that's the third. Better go after it. Group 3, rendezvous at Section Baker. Get going, fellas. Let's go! transport planes. Big boys. That's the Joker. One south, one east, and one north. You sent out interceptors? After all three. I don't suppose... There have been no reports from the west, sir. Bring post 21. Yes, sir. critical hour, I call upon the Congress of the United States to back its military leaders with the last dollar, the last man hour of labor, the last American life.
6, calling General Headquarters, priority line. Hello. They've landed where? Yes, yes. Across the Potomac, in American uniforms. Stand by for orders. Double the companies guarding the White House, the Capitol, the Senate building, and the House. Yes, sir. And have them challenge everybody, no matter what uniform. Halt. Who goes there? Company B, 183rd Infantry. 183rd, that, that's an Illinois outfit, ain't it? Yes. Yes, Chicago, Illinois. Do you ever go see the Cubs play? Cubs? A cub is a young animal, a bear. Sergeant the guard! Sergeant the guard! Halt! Who goes there? If we, as members of Congress, have ever been lacking in vigor in our nation's defense. If we have ever failed to realize the urgency of the nation's peril, let us be doubly vigilant now. Let us set an example of fighting Americanism for the whole nation to follow. Let us continue to... Gentlemen! Gentlemen! The enemy is attempting to seize the seat of government! We are surrounded! Secretary, gone, murdered. Do you have any casualty lists of the attack on the Senate? How many? Including who? Thanks, I'll get back to you. Do you remember what Senator Baker said when the military appropriations bill came up for vote? He said we could safely reduce our armed forces by half. He wasn't only wrong, he's dead. Enemy demands surrender of my state or threatens to atom bomb our principal cities. Can you protect me? Signed, Governor Clayton. Can you? How do we stand? We're driving him out of the city. In another 24 hours, the government will be safe. Well, I'm glad to hear that. <clears throat> Gentlemen. Gentlemen, they've invaded New York. I've been looking out the window here at our improvised radio transmitter. I saw hundreds of enemy troops moving in the streets below. It's only a matter of minutes before they find us and take this station off the air. Vince, they're coming into the building now. But in the little time we have left, I want to tell you how proud you can be of the ordinary citizen of New York. It seems every man and boy today has become a guerrilla fighter. I saw taxi drivers use their cabs as weapons to mow down enemy troops. I saw high school boys attack enemy tanks with pop bottles full of gasoline. I saw mounted policemen become a fighting cavalry. We take, take over off. now. Oh, Vince! Oh, Vince! The People's Government of America will take the wealth from the greedy, the speculators, and the capitalistic bourgeoisie, and distribute it among the workers, whose labor will never again be exploited for the benefit of the warmongers of Wall Street. The People's Government brings the citizens of New York a new freedom, a freedom based on order, a freedom based on loyalty to the leaders of the party, your party, which will work hand in hand with the Marxist democratic leadership of all other nations, so that never again will war be necessary among the civilized peoples of the world. Sit down. All right, sit down. Look. Look, you 
guys. Don't you drink whiskey, good whiskey? I drink it myself over there. Ah, whiskey. Whiskey good, ah. You try trick, I kill you. Your woman, too. No tricks, no tricks. Good whiskey. Look, baby, I tricked him into bringing me here. I'm gonna get you out. You don't know how wonderful it is. Just to see your face. To know that you're alive. I never thought I'd see you again, either. Then, we could just stay together. We should have met another time, honey. A year ago, a month. A month ago, I wanted a mink stove. I thought it was important. Since if I had my life to live over again. That's what everybody's saying, honey. You drink whiskey, too. Please. No. She doesn't want any. Drink. Listen, honey, I... Didn't we fly to the West Coast together, you and me? Uh, yes. Well, what are we doing back here? We are in New York, aren't we? Are you kidding? The man that was sitting behind that brandy glass, where is he? Holman? Well, I guess he left. Hey, he went out without paying for his drink. Do you know who he is? Well, yeah, he's uh, some kind of a fortune teller. Hypnotizes people, he says. Tells them what's going to happen. A phony if I ever saw one. Am I, Tim? That's for the drink. You asked for me, Congressman. Did you enjoy your little excursion into the future? Thank you. Mass hypnotism. That's what it was. Exactly. Then all that stuff about the enemy taking over my plant, it is another level, is it? It isn't really going to happen. It is? Unless you do something to stop it? Tomorrow springs from today like... like water from a rock. If you want to change what you will become, first change what you are. That goes for everybody. That goes for everybody. Good day, everybody. Well, I guess I've got to be going. Maybe make some of those tank parts. I'll be going with you as far as Washington. I've got some things to do also. Well, I'm in on this, too. So long, Tim. So long, fellas. Come back again. Finished with your drink? Yes, but I'll I... take care of her. Is that the way you want it? OK. Good luck to the both of you. I guess it's my turn. Do you happen to know the address of the nearest blood bank? I'll show you the way. Father of our country, George Washington said, to be prepared for war, is one of the most effectual means of preserving peace.